Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another gluten-free cooking session with Naomi from Naomi Scrappy Retreat. We are going to be making two dishes. One is going to be a breakfast casserole, and one is going to be strawberry, um, yep, strawberry pretzel salad. So I have already pre-done some things just because there's um, some of them, they're not necessarily time consuming, but they involve the oven and cooking, pre-cooking stuff. And so I just went ahead and did that. But I will tell you what we're doing as we're going along and hopefully you will make this with me or you'll make this afterwards. Anyway, um, let me know if you made either one, if you've had either one before, um, let me know in the comments below. Um, that way we can chat. So. What you're gonna need first, we're gonna go ahead and make the breakfast casserole first. And what you're gonna need first is you're gonna need a large bowl and you're going to need a good stirring type of a spoon. So the main thing, um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add our potatoes. This is a bag, uh, it says 28, 28 ounces, so it's one pound. Um, you could use this side. Uh, this one has the onions and peppers already in it. They're, the other one I don't think does, and there's a little bit more weight. It's fine. Um, as long as you're like um, almost to two pounds or two pounds, that's perfect. This recipe will work either way. So, and also letting you know, you can totally make this non-gluten free. It's, it's really as easy as, because um, we're going to be using a cream of mushroom soup. So that's it. Like you can, well, and I'm using corn checks instead of corn flakes, but um, so either way you can make this gluten if you, you know, or gluten free. Trust me, um, like everybody I've made this for that I've used the corn checks for has loved it with the corn checks. So, um, and some have I even commented that they like it better with the corn checks than without. So just dump your bag into your bowl. Now what I will tell you is that this needs to be thawed. So what I usually do is, um, depending on when I'm going to make this, I will buy this and I'll set it in my refrigerator and either use it um, the next day, which is what I did, or I'll set it on the counter and let it thaw out because I love this breakfast casserole at any time of the day. Um, I've made it for dinner before, but this one I'm actually going to not cook and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and then bring it out tomorrow morning and then have it for breakfast. So I will tell you how to finish it off, but we will not be finishing it off today. Um, I, will I will try to take a picture, which means I won't upload this video now until Saturday. Um, so I'll try to take a picture of what it looks like when it comes out, that way at least you'll know what it looks like. So, um, so you will add to your potatoes, you will add one container of sour cream Daisy, I've said it before, it's my favorite. I can't help it, that's what I love. So just add the whole container, it's a 16 ounce, one pound container of sour cream. You are also gonna need a half a cup of melted butter. I went ahead and pre-melted it and add that on it. What I will tell you is that you wanna let it cool a little bit, which I did not. So um, I just, trying to get this done today. So you want a half a cup of melted butter. Just put that off to the side. You're gonna wanna save this aside so that you can make your cream of soup. Um, and again, you can always um, buy it. They do have gluten-free cream of soups, but I've only ever seen mushroom and I don't like mushroom. So that's, you know, and you can use whatever cream of soup you like. If you like mushrooms, throw it in there. If you like chicken, throw it in there. Mine's gonna be like a chicken based. Um, so the next thing I did is I cooked pre-cooked bacon, uh, pre-cooked sausage, and this is ham that's already pre-cooked, it's by Johnsonville I believe, that's already pre-cooked and cubed, so all I gotta do is throw it in there. There's about a cup of each in there, and again, you can throw in there whatever you want, um, whatever you like, whatever you guys prefer. So it's just a really simple, simple meal. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add cheese. So you need about two cups of cheese. I always add extra. And I do not actually know how much cheese is in here because I used it first. There's probably about a cup and a half. So I'm gonna empty that bag in there. I'm sorry that this camera angle isn't very good. You can't see how big the bowl is, but I'll, I'll pick it up in a little bit and I'll show you how much food is in there. And then I'm just gonna add just a touch more, you know, just sprinkle it on there till, you know, I think maybe that's two cups or whatever. It's cheese, love cheese. 
So, those are your main ingredients. The other thing you're going to want, like I said before, is you're going to want to have a cream of soup. So give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and get, well, you know what? Let me just move this out of the way and move that out of the way. So all I do is I take one cup of water. Now this is how I make my cream of soup. I've always made it this way. And I don't know if it was my grandmother that showed me how to do this or not, but I'm putting it in the same bowl that I put that I, uh, the same pan that I took the melted butter out of because you have to add butter anyhow. So I usually use about a tablespoon of butter. So let's just scoop that off of there. And you wanna go ahead and heat that up. So while it's heating, I'm gonna pause this and then we'll come back in a minute um, to where we start adding other ingredients. Okay, so while that's heating up, let me go ahead and work on our cornstarch corn starch slurry and then um, we'll go from there so I have about a fourth of a cup of water that I've added in here this unfortunately I do not have an exact science for because I just do whatever looks good so I'm gonna try to give you some hints about what you need how much you need but I've always used a fork I've never used a tablespoon to get my cornstarch out so I don't know why but that's just how it is so there's about a tablespoon here and I usually put about two in there so it's a it's probably about two tablespoons to about one quarter cup but again this is me and this is how I make it and this is how I've been making it forever and everybody loves it so let's just mix that in it's really stodgy on the bottom until you start mixing it and then it loosens up and at this point, sometimes I add a little bit more, but we're just gonna do this and see what happens. Um, because while that's gonna finish heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of my seasonings out because I forgot to do that, so give me a second. To the water and the um, butter that I have on there, I add about a tablespoon of the Herbox chicken seasoning that I've used in the past before that I told you about because it is gluten-free. And again, if you are not making this gluten-free, you can use whatever seasoning. This one just happens to be gluten-free. And then I use, of course, my favorite ingredient. Um, this is my lemon pepper, my perfect pinch by McCormick. And I just sprinkle it in there. And then I put in some cracked pepper. And this is the only place that I add seasoning. Now, if you are not making um, your own if you're not making your own um, cream of soup, then you want to go ahead and mix it maybe like with the cream cheese or the sour cream or whatever, or even, you know, your open can. That way it really distributes really nice and evenly. This is how I do it because, well, again, I've always done it this way. So, and then I'm going to add some garlic and herb seasoning. And then just a touch of sea salt my pink sea salt. The major, most important key ingredient is your minced onion. You want your dried minced onion to be in this. So you actually want two tablespoons of minced onion. This is very important because this really changes the flavor of your, um, of your, of your, um, the casserole that we're making. So I'm going to actually just take off the lid and do two tablespoons. I'm telling you, this makes such a big difference. The original recipe was from a friend of mine from church and she used to make it, she used to make two of them. Every, um, every time we had like a church dinner or something, she made two of them. She didn't add the um, meat and stuff, she just made regular potato casserole. But she said that was the main the most important ingredient and i forgot one time and left it out and it does it makes a total difference in the taste of this dish so you know if you don't believe me try it sometime and see, tell me what you think so now to everything else that we've added we're going to add the cornstarch and then we're just going to stir that around and all we're doing is we're stirring that 
and then it's supposed to get thick. We are back. Um, we have this now thickened um, cream up soup. I actually like it to be thicker than what it is, but I've used it at this thickness too. It just depends. But with all the seasonings in there, this smells amazing. So all you want to do is just add that to your bowl with every all the other ingredients. And the major thing you're going to do is just stir it and stir it and stir it. Now I decided to go ahead and cook this now. That way all we have to do in the morning is heat it up depending on what we end up doing tomorrow. So you're just going to get your mussels in there and start stirring. Apparently my refrigerator kept some of this a little frozen because on the bottom of this bowl it was sticking to the bottom like not just sticking it was frozen to the bottom of the bowl so just make sure you stir this up really really well because you want everything to be really nicely incorporated now you could actually make this into a dinner casserole if you wanted you could add chicken and like an asparagus or peas or something some sort of vegetable or steak like steak and potatoes you could totally do that. So this is a very versatile dish with what you add to it. Your main ingredients are your cheese, your potatoes, your butter, your um, cream of soup, and your minced onion. Everything else is really, um, you know, an optional that you can add to it. So it just, it really does give you variety. Um, I made this once, I think, with chicken. I can't remember if it was peas or green beans. And it was good. I mean, I, we prefer the breakfast just because it's hello breakfast. But now that I talk about adding steak to it, I, w I think um, maybe that's what I'm going to do next time is do like a steak um, dinner casserole and do like steak and fried potatoes. Um, fried potatoes. Oh my goodness. Fried onions and add into this. And I think that's really going to be yummy. So I'm just really super excited about this. And like I said, I went ahead and decided I'm going to go ahead and cook it today. So I turned the oven on to 350 degrees. I didn't really want to cook this morning because I didn't want all the extra added heat in here. Um, I, you know, I live in a small apartment and I don't usually use my AC unless it's in the 90s. And of course, this week has been in the 90s. And I only have one AC, which is... Um, in my bedroom, but it's got to do the whole apartment. And so um, it really, um, like normally if the AC is on, you know, it's it's usually like 72, um, but I noticed yesterday it was 75. Like it was really struggling to keep up with the heat that was outside. But yesterday we were in the, um, we had temps of the hundred and teens so it was like 111 113 or something i don't know what it was but it was supposed to be really hot yesterday i didn't really go out um except for once and it was earlier on so i didn't you know i don't really know so this is what it looks like all together can you see that now our last step for this whole process is um the corn checks i was telling you about so what i did was i used four cups of the corn checks I blitzed it down and it became two cups. And then all I'm adding to it is some butter I melted earlier. It's a fourth of a cup of butter. And that's it. And then just stir it all together. And again, like I said, you could use corn checks because, um, corn flakes, because I am using corn checks. That's it. Just stir it up really well. Put it on the top. And then all we're going to do is we're going to spread it out. So I will show you what it looks like in just a second. So this is it. So we are going to cook it for an hour and probably 10 minutes. I will check it at the hour. I'll actually check it at the 50 minute mark. And then we will um, just come back and see what it looks like. And then in the meantime, I will clean my mess up and we will get started on making the strawberry uh, pretzel salad because I've already got the bottom part of that done. So hold on, give me a second. Potato casserole is in the oven right now and it's smelling good and it's well, it's been about 13, 14 minutes. I had to clean up my mess a little bit and get ready to make the strawberry pretzel salad. So what has already been done 
is the base. So that is four cups of, um, I use the Snyder, gluten-free Snyder pretzel sticks. So I use four cups of those. I blitz those down. I added three tablespoons of powdered sugar. Yep, I said powdered sugar. And then I added, I only added a third of a cup and I should have added a half a cup. So don't do as I did, do as I say, a <laughs> half a cup of butter, melted butter. Stir this in, throw this in a 375 oven for 15 minutes, bring it out, um, and yours won't be as dry as mine. Mine is um, still pretty loose, and so it needs a little bit more to hold it together, which is why I said use a half a cup. So I'm hoping that I can make this next layer and it doesn't cause an issue, so we'll see. Because of the noise, I went ahead and blitzed together one package, one eight ounce package of cream cheese, and then one cup of powdered sugar. Yes, powdered sugar. And just as a little um, tip or hint, I don't know if you've ever tried it, but um, cut strawberries, um, cut them like from, hold on just a second. So if you have a big strawberry, cut it in half, all the way to about the green portion and then if you mix up equal parts of powdered sugar and cream cheese and stuff that in there oh my goodness it's so so good and then if you dip it into baker's chocolate even better you could use Ghirardelli but my favorite because it's just it's easy is the Ghirardelli's um, chocolate mix so hold on let me show you see if I have any and let me show you So it comes in this little container. I know everything is backwards, but it comes, it's just the little Baker's dipping chocolate. Oh, this stuff is so good. Um, I use it to make um, dip bananas. I use it to make dip chocolate, or chocolate, this is chocolate. I use it to make dip um, pretzels, but my favorite thing is to make the stuffed strawberries dipped in chocolate. You've got to try this. So I may do this as an, um, an episode at another time. That way you can see not only the versatility of this, but know exactly what I mean when I talk about dipping strawberries. <gasps> so yummy. Um, literally, you have to try it. So now that we're back to what we were doing, like I said, one eight ounce cream cheese, one cup of powdered sugar. It's been beaten together really well. My tip to you is to let the cream cheese set out for a while. So mine has probably been sitting out for a couple hours to get it to a smoother consistency so that way you can beat it up. Otherwise it's gonna be a mess. And my next tip to you would be to cream the cream cheese first. <laughs> Don't, if you would have seen what I just did, you'll know why. Because I had like a little powdered sugar dust ball in here make sure that you do that first or put your powdered sugar on the bottom and then put the cream cheese on top of it and work work it in really slowly otherwise like i said you're going to have a dust cloud of powdered sugar and then all you're going to need on top of that is just a container of eight ounces of cool whip i actually picked up the light version because that's all they had in the store i was pretty disappointed when i went to the store i have been the last couple times um, it's just my local store that's right down the road. So all you're going to do then is take that whole eight ounces of cream cheese, strike that, cool whip, and just stir that in. Just make sure you get this really mixed in. So I'm going to speed through this portion just because I want to make sure it's really really well. Okay, can you see that? So it's nice and fluffy. So here's where I'm scared. As I said earlier, I didn't put enough butter in it. I don't know why. I just didn't. So now we got to work with what we have. So I'm going to scoop it out in smaller scoops. And um, that way I don't have to spread it as far. Do this. Now again, we're trying to not get things to move and it's already moved. So 
I'm, I'll be back because it's going to be a mess. So it wasn't easy or pretty, but I did manage to get this um, all even. What I had to do around the sides and what I should have done was make smaller scoops and put it closer um, to the edges and just smaller scoops all the way around. What I ended up using was just a regular um, spoon and using that to push it and flatten it. I also used a little water um, just to try to get it to smooth a little bit more. Now again, like I said, it's not pretty. There are some pieces of um, pretzel in there, but as you can see, it's now sealed all the way around. And that's what you want. You want it to be sealed. You want that cream cheese layer to be touching all the way around. You do not want any gaps anywhere because if you do, you are gonna have your strawberry mixture go down below even though we're gonna partially set it first. So let me put this, find a place in my fridge. Well, technically I'm gonna throw it in my freezer um, so it ch ch chills down faster and then um, we'll be ready to go to the next step. We are making the next layer. So what you wanna do is when you're making your layers, you want them to cool in between. So like I said, we made the pretzel, we made the pretzel layer, we cooled that then we made the cream cheese layer and that's being cooled. So if you're putting it in the refrigerator, you want to do it for about an hour. If you're putting it in the freezer, you want to do it between 15 to 30 minutes. Keep your eye on it because it will freeze. You don't want it to freeze. You just want it to cool quickly and everything to cool and set firm. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mix two packages, the three ounce packages of Jello with water. Now, I, um, because I wasn't paying attention, I got one sugar free and one regular. So, um, it's fine either way. I'm just letting you know that's what you're looking at. That's why the boxes look different. So, the next thing, and really you should add your water first, but I don't technically always do things I'm supposed to in the order I'm supposed to. So what you're going to want is three cups of water total. So about, um, I'm heating up the water right now on the back of the stove. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my whisk ready to go. And I just used my powdered sugar bowl, which is why there's white on it. I'm not concerned about the powdered sugar. So right now you're looking at almost a half a cup of ingredient in there. So you want to add about a cup and a half to where that says a half a cup on here. And then when we're done, we're going to go ahead and stir this in and make sure it's going to work okay. If not, we'll add another half a cup of hot water and then the rest of it's just going to be cold. Because we do not want this to be hot, hot when we put it on top the next layer. We actually are going to cool this off also um, as much as we can in the meantime. And then while we're waiting for the water to get hot, cool, hot, supposed to be hot. We are also going to cut up some strawberries. So I'm just going to fast forward through this part because you do not need to see this. And actually I might just stop it all together, but you could add frozen strawberries. You could, um, I don't, again, I've been pretty disappointed with the store lately. They did not have any fresh strawberries, any frozen strawberries. So I like to do a mixture of both. Um, I'm adding, you know, and I don't know if I've ever measured it before, but I'm adding about a fourth of a cup of fresh. So it's probably like a small, one of those small packages, I think is what I normally get, um, of the frozen, already sliced, sliced strawberries. I thaw them out, let them, and then I just add fresh strawberries into it. So it probably equals about a fourth of a, or it probably equals four cups when I'm done, but I'm not sure. So hold on just a minute and we'll be back. Strawberries are cut and they're yummy. Love fresh strawberries. That is actually looking good. So I'm going to turn the water on and get it cooled, get it cold. Um, so that way we can just add another cup to this, let it cool off and then we will um, go ahead and add the strawberries 
as soon as I get the water in here. So that should be two cups. It's not because I got it frothy. It's a little dangerous when you add it like that because you don't know if it, you're good or not, but there's two cups right there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the strawberries, which, you know what, let me cool this down a little bit more and then I will add the strawberries at the last moment. So we're not quite done yet, people, but we're getting there. So I will check on the pretzel part and then um, I will try to get this um, jello cooled down and then we will finish this dessert up and have it set. So I also put the jello in the freezer. You have to really be careful with the jello because otherwise it'll get a skim on top and then it'll be yucky on the top. So I, but I just want it to cool down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and check on the potato bake and see how that's going. Um, it's, I'm like two minutes away from 50 minutes. I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be done, but let's go ahead and just look at it and see what happens. So yeah, you I, I don't know if you can see this or not, it is starting to get golden around the edges, but there's still too much stuff happening. It's not quite setting up, so we're going to put that in. We really want that to be golden around the edges, so golden brown around the edges and starting to get that way on the top as well. So we're going to let that go in. I'm going to put probably 10 more minutes on the clock, actually 15 minutes, that'll give it an hour five. And then um, we'll check it then. And then by that time, um, our jello should be already cooled and I should already be starting to make this. So we'll see how everything plays out. Hey guys, the timer has gone off. And so we are going to go ahead and check this. I actually added five more minutes. So our total time is an hour and 10. Oh my goodness, I, you, I wish you could smell this. It smells amazing. I already know how this tastes, so I'm not gonna taste it now, especially since it just came out hot. I went ahead and um, took the Jello out of the fridge, actually out of the freezer. And I'm trying to determine if I want to add the strawberries to it or add them later. But let's go ahead and add, let's just do this differently. Let's put the strawberries right on top of the cheesecake that's already on there. Sometimes I notice in the past when I've tried to add um, my mixture, like all the strawberries will clump in one area. So I'm going to do something a little different today and we're both going to see if it actually works out better this way instead of, you know, adding them all into the into the jello. So now I'm just going to spread them around a little bit because I still have some clumps here or there of strawberries. But I'm going to lift this up in a second so you can see I have to get better at showing the, cam the camera angles on some of these because sometimes you really just can't see these. So this is what it looks like. And now the jello is almost getting ready to the set point. So I'm just, oh, you know what? This works so much better, guys. So from now on, I am going to put the strawberries on first. And you know what makes me sad? Look what I just saw in the bottom that did not mix up. So I'm hoping I won't have any issues with my jello because look, there's some of my gelatin. Well, that's just how my cooking has gone the last couple of days. So I'm hoping yours is doing much better. But I think what I did is I didn't stir long enough and I didn't let it set to see if I needed to stir it long enough. So make sure yours is completely stirred in before you add your cold water and before you set it aside. Otherwise, this is what will happen and it's a very sad day so i will go ahead and put this in the fridge and now it's just gonna set so however long it's gonna take for this to set probably a couple hours um because i'm now missing some of my gelatin i don't know 
but I will try to go ahead and take a picture of this and submit it with my, um, with my, yep, with my, um, when I do the video, when I upload it, I will try to go ahead and get a picture of this. But as of now, it looks amazing and that's it. So I hope you have had a wonderful day. I hope you are a blessing to others and that you are blessed. So until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys for joining me. Bye.